We're talking about setting up your classroom for learner agency. In a competency-based education classroom, it's really important that students have independence to learn what they're ready to learn and aren't held back because the resources and materials aren't available to them. So we're going to talk about how you can set up your classroom to allow for this learner agency and independence. The two most important things when it comes to this are the resources that are available to kids and the available spaces for them to learn. It's really important that the resources are readily available and not just sitting in your closet or hidden somewhere where students can't use them as they need them. So different resources that should be out and available are mass centers and manipulatives, different writing materials, um, anchor charts of things that you've already taught readily available, not necessarily hang on the wall. Some people keep them hanging on like the clip hangers or stored somewhere where students, or in an organized way where students know where to access them. Um, any kind of books that could help the kids, having a library in your classroom, and also previously taught materials. And students need to be able to access all the resources in the classroom and even help create resources and decide where they go. You have to keep in mind that these are the tools that the students are going to use to learn. And when you make them and put them out, you know what they are for and where they are. But the students need to be a part of creating that so they know how to best use them. It's also important to have available spaces in your classroom that create transparent learning environments. Um, this could be anything such as flexible seating or even student preferred seating, um, cozy spots, or thinking like where do your students like to work? I've had some classes where I've had completely flexible seating classrooms and the students have really just wanted a chair and desk to work in. So I got some more tables and chairs and was able to accommodate for my students. Or maybe I had too many chairs that weren't being used and students like sitting on the floor and sitting around the classroom more. So I took some of those out so I could have more space for kids to sit in other spots. Um, it's important this, for the same reason as the resources that students help create places to facilitate the best learning. This is their learning. They need to be comfortable and they need to be in a place that works for them. And every area in your classroom should be conducive for learning to, for at least one student. Um, it's important that you don't just have wasted space and that each area of the classroom is a point where a student, a place where students can work. So here are some pictures from my classroom, my third grade classroom this past year. Um, on the left, you see a student using an anchor chart. It's at her level and it has the review of what has happened or what we talked about in a previous lesson. And she's able to go up and use it. It's on her level. It's not hanging up high on the wall somewhere. And she's able to see what her next step is on her story mountain for planning her writing. On the right, I have some tubs that have different centers and practice and games for different math standards. So each tub is labeled for a different standard and students can go up to that tub of whatever standard they're working on. And inside of that are either games that they made for that standard or manipulatives that we decided as a class would be helpful for that standard or um, games that they can play with their peers for each standard. And then this one's kind of messy, but um, on the left you can see our math center station kind of where there's all different manipulatives. It's labeled so the students know what manipulatives go where. And um, each of the manipulatives on there are things that students are actually using as they work through the standards. On the right, I'm sure everybody has this already in their classroom with the amount of technology that we have, but also thinking about your online resources and how are students accessing videos or technology in a way that is easily accessible for them. Obviously we have the desktops now they're taking next year, but everybody will have a Chromebook. Um, so that'll make it really easy to allow them to go on the computer when they're ready for an online resource. Go ahead and take a moment and think about how you can set up your classroom to create um, accessible resources for your students. Maybe you already are doing that and maybe you have some new ideas about how you can do it. 
Go ahead and pause the video and think about that. Okay, so maybe you can turn and talk to someone around you who's also watching this video or just jot down some of the ideas you had. Okay, and then we have spaces. This picture on the left is a kidney table where teachers usually hold their guided reading groups or um, skill groups or whatever. Um, it's a teach a, a table for teachers to meet with students. Um, I decided that I was going to take the legs off the table and put it on the floor so students could use it. And before I had the little teacher nook back in the corner so I could sit at, in the teacher nook and see the whole class. I decided to switch it around and I turned it around so the teacher nook was out facing the class so that it's just more inviting for students and it's not the teacher table. Anybody can go there and work there and it creates a lot of flexibility for collaboration. And then when I need to meet with a group, I can just pull them over to another table or I'll say, okay, I need this group to come meet me on the carpet or meet me on the couch or <clears throat> anywhere I feel that would be best for those students to work. On the right, I have my library. Um, having students surrounded by books just kind of creates a environment where literacy and reading is really important and there's comfortable places where they can enjoy reading in the library. Um, on the left here is just another example of a table on the floor. My class this year really likes sitting on the floor and working and they're able to collaborate here at this table pretty easily. They're talking about their writing rubrics and goals right now in this picture. Um, in the middle picture is a couch that I was very lucky to get from a family member when they moved. And the couch I thought was interesting. A lot of kids didn't like working on the couch with groups, but when they were working independently, they enjoyed sitting at the couch and working. And um, it also created a nice kind of family environment for our community meetings and our whole group meetings. And then on the right is just another picture of the library. This is on the last day of school, which is why, <laughs> or after we cleaned up our classroom, which is why all the bins are messy up there. I was trying to get stuff up off the floor to clean up, but you can just see the different kinds of seating arrangements in there as well. So go ahead and pause again. Think about how spaces and um, learner agency work in your classroom. Okay, hopefully you got some good ideas from this or thought of some good ones yourself that I would love to hear. Um, and it's important to remember when you're doing this that less is more, that it's really up to the students to decide what works for them. Your classroom is for your students, so it's important that they have a play a part in helping you design it and put it together. And you need to keep in mind who's doing the work. You hopefully know all these things about the standards that you're teaching. You've mastered all of this. It's up. It's the kids who are doing the work and doing the learning. And you need to make sure that your classroom and your attitude towards your classroom states that to them. Um, so it's hard, but you, it was very hard for me too, but you can't have your classroom totally ready to go in August. You need to be able to say, well, this could probably be changed. We'll have to change this. We'll see how they feel about this aspect of it. And that's okay to give up control to the students because it's their learning and their work and really their place just as much, if not more, than it is yours.